So now we'll discuss uh, the various tissue factors that affect unloading of oxygen from the hemoglobin molecule. Uh, till now, you may have gotten the impression that uh, the hemoglobin oxygen uh, relationship is pretty steady uh, in the sense that oxygen is picked up by a hemoglobin in the lungs and uh, uh, it's unloaded or offloaded uh, nicely and smoothly in the tissues uh, and the gradient of the tissue and the incoming fresh blood is really enough and no drama occurs that's not the case a lot of drama occurs okay uh, it's the gradient is not enough where does the drama uh, take place the drama takes place in the tissues uh, when the blood with all its oxygen enters into the tissue uh, it needs that extra push uh, and guess where it comes from it comes from all the tissue factors that are uh, characteristic of an active tissue so imagine uh, the blood enter entering into a sort of acidic chamber and it's this uh, acidic environment that allows or rather forces uh, hemoglobin to uh, dissociate its oxygen uh, more than it would have liked so it's not just gradient dependent it's forced to loosen up its control over the uh, oxygen and so oxygen readily dissociates from the uh, from the grab of hemoglobin which it would not have been possible without uh, with just the gradient in the following slides we'll be looking at the shifts of the hemoglobin oxygen dissociation curve and uh, solidify our understanding of what exactly goes on when the blood hits the tissues so now we are at the tissue level so as you can see on this side uh, there is a there are a bunch of causes which shift this curve to the right while over here it's the opposite the curve is uh, shifted to the left what do we mean by that let me just explain that first and then we'll go into the individual causes so this is the curve as you can see okay this is the curve this is the normal hemoglobin oxygen dissociation curve okay now rightward shift would mean any shift of this curve towards the right to, towards the curves right okay right or down like this towards this is referred to as rightward shift okay and any any shift which is towards the left or upwards is referred to as leftward shift more important is uh, the rightward shift because uh, this is important when we developed the curve in the experiment in the in the lab this is what we got this is ideal oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve under ideal conditions okay uh, normally in the human blood it's always uh, pushed towards the right at all times and this is done by two three uh, dbg or bpg i think in guyton it's written bpg it's by phosphoglycerate this is a compound which is constantly being uh, formed as a result of uh, glycolysis uh, which is going on uh, inside the rbc and it's happening all the time okay he has shown when its uh, concentration is, is increased it causes significant rightward shift let me just go through these causes first and i'll explain the physiology behind it uh, in a bit so increase in pco2 or and and or decrease in ph again remember that the blood is entering into an acidic environment okay so uh, tissues are at it they are they are breaking down oxygen they are uh, 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 releasing uh, heat uh, as as energy uh, energy as heat uh, secondary to metabolism you know this happens in mitochondria uh, the f1 particle which is involved in oxidative phosphorylation uh, there is always heat uh, formed in that reaction right uh, so all of these three conditions uh, written here can be summed up uh, or can be remembered if you remember a metabolically active tissue okay and 2 3 dpg is within the blood so that's that all of these factors please remember this these four factors they push the curve rightward or downwards as soon as the blood uh, enters into the tissue just look at the normal curve and then the dotted curve okay and remember your p50 now p50 is the partial pressure of oxygen which is required to saturate 50 percent 
uh, uh, of your hemoglobin. So put in another way, a, a PO2 of 26.7 mmHg is required normally when the curve is in its normal natural habitat to saturate 50% uh, hemoglobin. Okay. Now, if you move the curve towards the right or downwards, what will happen? This will happen. So this point of intersection right here, this will be shifted to a new point, which is here. Okay. So there will be a rightward, uh, the intersection would occur at a more rightward uh, point. So what, is, what does this physiologically really mean? It means that to achieve the same 50% hemoglobin saturation, we now require more PO2. This increase in the value of P50, this shows, in other words, that the association or the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen has decreased. In other words, in, in further other words, uh, oxygen will be released from the hemoglobin much more easily if there is a rightward or downward shift of the HB oxygen hemoglobin curve. All of these conditions, they cause a rightward shift. Any condition which causes a rightward shift will make the bond between hemoglobin and oxygen loose, unstable, such that oxygen can now easily come out of hemoglobin. Okay. Uh, and then the, sh the, the causes that cause the leftward shift opposite they increase the, uh, the affinity of uh, oxygen for hemoglobin and hence it will be more tightly bound to hemoglobin and won't be released uh, and uh, it requires for any given PO2 uh, the P50 will be decreased the value of P50 will be decreased which is another way of uh, giving the uh, relation of the affinity between hemoglobin and oxygen. Uh, there's just one more entry and it's of quite obvious why this is here, hemoglobin F. Now, what is the difference between he uh, hemoglobin A, which is the adult hemoglobin and hemoglobin F, which is the fetal hemoglobin, is that fetal hemoglobin has much, much more affinity for oxygen than uh, hemoglobin A. And hence, when there is fetal hemoglobin present, those curves are shifted upwards or to the left. This explanation uh, right here, this is also, this has a this has a name, which is a very famous UQ. This is called the Bohr's effect. It can be divided into the Bohr carbon dioxide effect and the Bohr pH effect. But I think in Guyton, he just mentions uh, Bohr effect. Bohr effect is basically all the explanation of these factors causing the right or downward shift of the hemoglobin oxygen dissociation curve. That's all related to hemoglobin oxygen dissociation curve, its shifts and the Bohr's effect.